Welcome back to AI War 2 Beginner Walkthrough. It's time to move on to some more uh, special structures, I guess you might say. Now, we're going to head over here to Han, to this Spire Archive. It's a special hack, and there's only one of them on the map, so this is our target. Before I do that, let's take a look at color. Now, that's where we got our big counterattack wave from before. Of course, we're not going to pass through it the same way. And notice I've already grabbed a duster, and this is just in the spirit of keeping things moving along and getting this walkthrough wrapped up. Went fairly easy, actually. I'm feeling a lot more confident in our fleet after we're able to knock that off without too much trouble. So, if we pop in here, the big thing that Duster has a couple, they've got another Mark III Fortress. That's pretty powerful. And if we check out its range, you can see it covers a good amount of this gap here between the two wormholes that we would need to pass through. And then we've got a Dire Shredder Guardian in there. Those are just all kinds of fun. They spawn a bunch of drones. We've got a pretty strong cannon. And Dire is just sort of, you know, the terminology for something that's even worse than a normal Guardian. Okay, so an elite Guardian, if you will. And then we've got a Gravity Guardian down here that slows stuff down. So that's not a great deal of fun. And so all of that, I'm sure, combined to wreak havoc and more Gravity Guardians here on the ships we sent through before, and I do think it was the Hive Golem that triggered it. Now for our hack, I'm again going to leave our Golem ships behind. We will probably get to see them in action, but not yet. Just going to take our main fleets, and of course we've got one more now. They're all on hold fire. And I'm just going to plow through here. I want to get to Han... And get this hack going. Taking damage on border world. And Taking they pop in there. Enemy and there's 20 threat in the system. See, we don't have that much right now. And I'm intentionally doing something that's kind of dumb here just to see consequences again. But we should be okay. Now I'm going to move over to this side of the system. We've taken some damage. Unload everybody. Take off the hold fire. We just want to clear this out. We'll take them down. There we go. Let's just move over here. So we're not going to be able to be rebuilding ships over here because we're one system too far away. We're just going to move Enemy back and retreat. And notice they're all, you know, some of them are retreating. We would normally want to just clean everything out. But because of our long-range ships, we're actually going to get away with it. We're just going to go ahead with the Spire Archive Extraction. And boom, boom, boom. Now, notice this. This is the counterattack is building with current strength 18. The more losses you take, the stronger it will become. You destroy all the guard posts before the counterattack launches. And look down below. Prevented from launching because our current forces of 179 strength are more than the current requirement of 3.6. If the counterattack builds strengths, that requirement will rise. And so, when you see these pop up when you're attacking, pay attention. You know, and this is how a lot of players have been getting beat recently by big counterattacks, especially against the Reconquista AI type, which specializes in those, because they're not uh, paying sufficient attention to this and sticking around when they should be retreating to minimize the damage. Now, this stuff over here is spawning and heading at us, but not too much. And it says extreme response, but that's relative, again, to the level 4 difficulty. So that's no problem. We're just going to go ahead and speed this up quite a bit, because we don't want to sit here for 15 minutes and just wait for it at normal speed. Now, there's also, and you see all these ships trying to run away, and they're joining the threat fleet. Again, if we cleared everything out, and we're more centrally located, we would be in a much better position to wipe a lot of these ships out before they join threat. That's what we should be doing. And then if we look at this... Hmm. We could hack the Devourer Beacon. Your chief 
science officers suggest hacking this beacon will summon a giant zenith golem that will roam the galaxy, attacking everything in its path. And that is the legendary cookie monster, the zenith devourer. We're not going to activate that, of course, for this game. Nice to know it's there. There are two more beacons that we have not seen yet. And let's see. We could get this one. Anti-marauder phlebotium emitter. And of course, Taking fire on it doesn't really take a whole lot of imagining to figure out what these do. It's clear by their names by now. You know, nano cost suppression field emitter releases the nano cost. This one Science releases the marauder. And I think it's I think it's interesting that we're given the option of, you know, activating marauders or nano cost or whatever, some of the other factions, even if you didn't Under set them up in the lobby. And that, that's just sort of another thing that you can do if you wish. Ah, another instigator base, and this one's on Dean. So this is one reason why I should not have come in here when I did. Because, you know, you know that the instigator base, and this is, uh, okay, this is boosting the hunter fleet budget by 28.2% of a wave every minute. But, you know, you get a flow for when the regular timing of things is, and when you're about to get another instigator base, so you're about to get another CPA, it is not a good idea. Ah, huh, speaking of which, another CPA. Perfect timing, game. It is not a good idea to begin a major endeavor like this, which takes 15 minutes to hack. Taking fire behind so... That's just sort of a lesson that we can absorb right now. And let's see, where's the other... Let's take a look at our resources. Yeah. So we, we could get some science from knocking out the anti-marauder emitter, but we would release marauders. We aren't going to do that. And then if we go down here to our factions... There's a resistance fighter beacon we could release them. And those would actually help us. Packing job complete. But I'm not going to bother activating those that way. We'll see all those factions in other games. So, in any case, Exo Strike Force incoming based on our attack on Han. And this instigator wave is boosting the Hunter fleet. Probably a good idea to put an end to that. We've got the CPA arriving. So I'm just going to make sure none of that stuff... Uh, is particularly dramatic, but you can see our science. We have gained a whole bunch because we got 8,000 from that spy archive, and now let's invest some of it. Let's see what we have available. Well, the citadels, and that was recently changed to improve your battle stations as well, so that'll affect the Jorviad Guard. We'll bump that up. And let's see. I maxed out the engineers earlier already, maxed out the sentries. They're not here anymore. It looks like we're going back to the top with all of these things and just upgrading our standard ships. And probably aim a couple more. Nope, I don't want that one. Just got it. We'll go concussion and disruptive. And again, just pathing down the list. But if we take a look now, with all the extra strike craft we've had built, all the extra frigates, I put up some of the new turrets, not many, because our energy is not super high. If we take a look at our fleets, and let's see, let's add some of these together. And we're pushing 300. We're very close to 300, probably not quite there. And actually, if you add in this one, which we absolutely should, that's our Hive Golem. We're considerably over 300. So we're at what would be considered probably a late middle game fleet level. You often want to be at 400 or above for the final attack. But if we take a look down here, you know, we're estimating the strength of this. I'm sure it's increased since then, but that's probably less than 300. So in theory, we could just potentially just walk in there and stomp it. We're going to be a little bit more careful than that, make sure of our victory, but could probably do that and of course our more immediate concern is to try out good old Mr. Super Terminal. Now after taking up all of the coordinators if we take a look at the AIP we have a floor of 180 and we are current we would currently be at 176 if you do the math there so that would put us at just four buffers so we're pretty much even 
on all of that fun stuff. All right. Well, the AI threat got up to almost 200. The exogalactic attack from doing the spy archive, that didn't hurt us much. But the CPA was a lot bigger than the last one. Plus, we were plowing through a bunch of systems to do various things like knock out the instigator base. But eventually, we cooled off most of it. We've got all of our golem-type stuff down here in Murdoch. They're all just sort of hanging out and waiting for what may happen. And the reason they're doing that is if we look over here at our hack instructions for the super terminal, you'll cause a massive incursion of AI forces while doing it, some of which will head directly to your home world as an exogalactic strike. So just in case they get all the way through over there, I sort of want to hang on to this. Don't kill yourself by holding on too long. You only get one shot at this before the AI adapts. So make it count. And of course, all of our mobile fleets are over here. They're going to participate in the actual hacking. And this is different than it was in the first game because in the first game, they didn't do exo attacks somewhere else. It was all here. They just flooded this system with massive amounts of ships. Fire behind enemy and we are in place. I just put everybody in pursuit and wipe out the system. They've got a couple things of collections of turrets here. Not that much in terms of their actual guard posts. It's not a particularly highly defended system overall. Now, since we have next door to Alpha, of course, they can rebuild any ships that we lose. It should be a helpful bonus to us. Parasites are doing their little bit. Okay. Taking fire on border world. Let's uh, let's eliminate that pursuit mode. And I think I want to be an attack move and move to the edge of the system. And I don't think there's any reason now not to take the plunge. Let's Our see what's up with this. Starting. Just going to speed it up a bit while the super terminal ramps up its response. Now it's starting to spit ships out. We've got some parasites over here that are going to be Taking killed. Zombies, whichever. World. And yeah, why are you all going this way? Everybody... Okay, everybody attack move to here. Not sure what you're confused about. Okay, spawning, 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 and this turns into a skull because there were ships on Murdoch very temporarily. See the hacking going up, our hack timer going up, our hacking is going down. And you can see the AI response level is now high because of how many hacking points we've spent against it. Oh, and they're trying to retreat over that way. That's probably not a good thing for us, actually. Let's go with moving maybe up here a little bit closer. And if we look at our AI progress, the reduction has gone up considerably. We're like at 140 now, and dropping would be our effective AI progress if there was no floor. On More strike forces incoming. I'm going to try to stick with us a little bit longer. You can see Murdoch, 130 strength. There's, there are now regularly ships there, but not that many. And it's basically now a game of brinksmanship. And look down here. We're actually going a little bit uh, faster on the simulation than that can handle right now. So we'll bump it back down to two times. And it seems to be able to handle that okay. But brinksmanship in terms of how much can you handle. And we could keep this going for a while longer. I just don't see the point. If we look at our AI progress down to 100 and change. We're not going to need that much in this game. Enemy activity on border and yeah, we're starting to drop our fleets here. It's time to... S oh. The hack canceled itself. Fire on enemy world. That's interesting. The only way... There's... 
normally you cancel it up here. Or maybe it got, uh, the, that's what happened. The hacking ship got crippled. So you want to keep the flagship away. You can cancel the hack by clicking on the timer that's up here, or you can just destroy the super terminal. So that's how you get rid of it. But in any case, we need to uh, stop hanging out around these parts. Come on. And we just need to sort of get back to Alpha. We need to escape, let the parasites do their job. We've got to heal up and we've got to defend against all this nonsense. And make sure it doesn't wipe us out. And when we're done with that, there will be more frivolity to be had. All of that is mostly under control. We still have some threat. A bunch of it came into honor. I built a few more turrets and knocked everything out. I'm going to need to knock out some more defenses. We're pretty close on energy. But first off, let's just see additional hack that we haven't done yet. And that is the Covert Science Extraction. Last for a fairly decent amount of time. And then you, in this case, 30 science, 30 hacking rather, for the full 3,000 science that's available on this planet. And then we sort of move on from there. Now, we might as well move our fleets to an open location. Let's see. Let's just go over here. Knock out that guard post. Just pick one at random. Unload. And let's get that hacker rolling. And we're still on accelerated time here. But this just runs until you get everything out of it. Once again, you've got to stick around until the hack is complete. And look, they're spawning ships from over here. And again, we're seeing more of a response here because the AI response level is extreme and going up. So because we've used so much hacking against them, they're pretty ticked off. And by the way, if you remember the super terminal hack, this is another mechanic that I didn't think was back, but it actually is. What that means is you'd actually be better off doing the super terminal if you can get away with it before doing other any other hacks that are directly against that AI. In other words, not neutral. And the reason why that would be better, there we go, the science has been taken care of, that's it, is that you would have a lower response level and therefore you'd be able to sustain the super terminal hack for longer. The super terminal itself has been tweaked recently and expected to be tweaked more. They're not sure if it's difficult enough yet or not, and I can't form an opinion on that until trying it on a higher difficulty, but there we are. I only got 2,000 science. I thought it was going to be 3,000. I must have had that wrong. In any case, we could continue going around doing that with more hacking, all of that fun stuff. We'll go ahead and notch another upgrade just because we have the science for it. And there is now only one thing left to do, and that's to plow our path to Elbin. Barring something really weird happening, next update will have us completing this struggle and finally confronting the AI Overlord. So that's something to look forward to. Until then, thanks for watching, everybody. Beginner walkthrough will hopefully conclude coming up next time.